welcome to another video from Learn on the Go. On this video, we will be talking about personification. What is personification? It is a literary device where human qualities, traits or actions are given to non-human objects, animals or ideas. Simply, it's giving life to something that doesn't have a life. Let's understand better by looking at some examples. The first example, the wind whispered through the trees. The wind whispered through the trees. Here, the non-living object is wind. Wind does not have a life to whisper. So here, it's described as if it can whisper, which is a human action. What difference does it bring to this statement? Personification, personifying the wind, to say that it could whisper creates a beautiful image in the reader's mind. It visualizes that the wind blows while making its whooshing sound. Let's look at another example. The soup was tormenting her. Again here, a soup is something that does not have life. But we are saying that the soup was tormenting her, torturing her, something that only humans could do. So this gives the soup human-like qualities, specifically the ability to torment someone. By using personification, here we're trying to emphasize how overwhelming or uncomfortable the experience with the soup is. Perhaps it could be because it's too hot, too spicy or unpleasant in some way. That's why it's tormenting her. So instead of just saying the soup was too hot, the soup was too spicy, we can personify the soup to add more details, to add more effect by saying that the soup was tormenting her. Here's one more for you to understand better. The glistening waterfall revealed itself from behind a curtain of ivy. Here I've added a little more detail, but let's look at what we're trying to personify. Here, the non-human object is the waterfall. I've added an adjective to describe the waterfall as glistening. But now it says that the waterfall revealed itself. If you think about it, if you're closer to a waterfall and if you see a curtain of ivy, to reveal a waterfall means that when you come closer, when you pass the curtain of ivy, you can actually see the waterfall. So here, the waterfall is personified because it's described as if it can reveal itself. Being a non-human object, a waterfall cannot intentionally reveal itself. So what is the purpose of personifying the waterfall here? The personification here makes the scene feel more magical and alive, as though the waterfall has the conscious ability to hide and then make a dramatic appearance. This adds a sense of mystery as well as beauty to the description, suggesting that the waterfall is almost playfully interacting with its surrounding. Now that we've looked at a few examples, let's discuss why we use this literary device of personification. The first reason why is to create emotional connections. It helps the reader empathize with inanimate objects, animals, or other abstract concepts by making them more relatable or familiar. An example to understand this better is, let's say you're describing a storm as angry. The angry storm rummaged through the town. So here, using the human feeling or the emotion angry to describe the storm evokes a stronger emotional response on the reader so they would feel how strong the storm was. Thereafter, personification is also used to enhance imagery. It makes descriptions more vivid, allowing the reader to visualize the scenes more clearly, like in the example we saw at the end, where the glistening waterfall revealed itself from behind the ivy curtain. Personification adds layers of meaning and personality to its objects or settings. The third reason why we could use personification is to convey a mood or a tone. Personification can help set the atmosphere 
or tone of a story that we are trying to write. For instance, a smiling sun creates a cheerful mood. The sun can't smile, we're personifying it, but when we say the smiling sun, it creates a cheerful mood. While, like in the previous example, whispering wind might create a mysterious or an eerie tone. So we can use personification to convey mood or tone as well. Now that we have learned what personification is, now it's your turn to try personifying the following. The sun, the rain, the cake. But think about why and the purpose of using personification for these objects. Thank you for listening. See you on another video from Learn on the Go. Make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notifications so that you know when a new video is out. Until I see you again, bye.